Welcome to the NDIS Property Australia podcast. Before starting this episode, we need to provide a general disclaimer. Information contained in this podcast is general in nature only. It does not take into account the objectives, financial situation, or needs of any particular person. You need to consider your financial situation and needs before making any decisions based on the information in this podcast. And you should consider seeking independent and professional advice for your personal circumstances. All right, let's begin. G'day all. It's Min and Matt in the office here at NDS Property Australia. We're here to do another podcast today. Um, we're only about 10 days out, I think. From the election, yeah, yeah. I think it's the 20th. May yeah. 21, I think. Yeah, yeah so get, get your pens ready, everyone. Um, the biggest topic in the, mar- in the, in the marketplace with NDS is how, how will the election uh, winner, I guess, uh, make the reforms necessary for the NDS because all the parties agree that the NDS at the moment is a complete mess. Uh, it, it hasn't come out the way it was supposed to be. Um, and the Labor Party and the Coalition, they really want to make, make, make some big changes. So today, Matt and I will go through a couple of the um, points, just touching some of the points uh, that some of these parties are talking about with regards to how they want to amend and modify and make reforms to the NDIS. And uh, that's pretty much it, Matt. Uh, Matt, welcome today. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Finn, for having me. Yeah, so um, just on the agenda first, uh, we'll just be, I suppose, the Labor Shadow Minister for the NDIS, that's uh, Bill Shorten, um, announced um, the Labor Party's policies um, that will take to the next election in terms of NDIS funding and changes to the NDIS scheme. Um, so they've, in, uh, they've said that they will increase advocacy funding um, by an extra $10 million, um, coming up soon. Mm-hmm. Um, and they will also, they said that they will do a Centre for Excellence for Employment um, that will provide kind of a clearinghouse for ideas and increase the capacity uh, among employment services. Um, that's for people in the NDIS um, who would be, you know, capable of work, mm. um, which should be a good thing. Um, and they'll also be pausing, they've said that they'll pause the Morrison's government's change to supported independent living or SIL. Um, so Shorten articulated that he that the current policy does, doesn't does really do much to reduce vacancy rates and that SIL funding um, should be kind of a, in a more flexible way that it operates. Um However, he didn't really describe what that will look like. So I suppose after the election, we'll kind of have to revisit this and just see what, what, what changes and what, what kind of that um, means from the Labor, Labor camp. Um, and then they'll also be reviewing uh, the scheme sustainability um, with the promise that any changes will be based on statistics that have um, come to light up to this point uh, through um, the NDIA and the NDIS. Um, and the national disability data. Um, so they'll be basing uh, kind of what we've seen up to this point and using that as a measure moving forward uh, with assessing and obviously making sure that the scheme um, is more sustainable in the long term. Um, they'll also be kind of centralising uh, the delivery of, of disability supports, including for those who are not eligible um, for the scheme. So I think this is more of them kind of promising for more visibility and more um, sort of, sort of I, I suppose, a situation where people are more aware of where the funding fits in because at the moment um, the funding that participants tend to have is very complex and applying for that is complex. Um, so more transparency would obviously do a lot for NDIS specific participants and people living with disabilities. Um, they've also said that they um, will ensure that people with disabilities are given priority status um, during uh, pandemic events and emergency um, responses that occur. Um, so obviously we've seen that come to light over the last two years where um, as a result of NDI, um, as a result of COVID and the pandemic, uh, we've seen delays in funding for NDIS participants. Um, they're also developing a national autism strategy. So I'm not sure, they haven't really gone into too much details about what that involves. Um, so we'll have to see, obviously, post-election 
um, how that pans out if they if they um, win the election. Um, they've also said that they will have uh, 400 changing places bathrooms, which are essentially toilets for people um, in, in public. Yeah, in public for yeah. in the HBS or FA categories, high school uh, needs. Yeah, yeah, yep. Um, and they've promised an extra 83,000 more workers for the NDIS. So obviously at the moment, um, you know, there's been a lot of delays with participants both receiving funding and also given the support and care that they need. Um, so hopefully that will, um, you know, go towards improving that situation. They've also um, mentioned that they will have 300 more staff working in the NDIA. Mm. To add on to that with the labour information there, Matt, at, I guess at the heart of the announcement, there was a promise from the Labour Party to really co-design the changes to the NDIS with, with the people with disability in the sector and to boost the number of people in the um, the NDIA board, on the NDIA board as well, sorry. Yep. Um, yep. Even though in the news there's been a lot of informal statements from the government saying we're not cutting still funding at all, they have been informally cutting the, the funding. And the Labor acknowledges this. So they want to bring in an expert review process to guarantee the plans, plans will not be arbitrarily cut um, because that would just definitely deal with that issue there, the concerns of a lot of people out there. Um, there, are currently, there are also currently a lot of lengthy delays in the AAT, which is the um, the tribunal where people can go to court, the administrative, tri- administrative appeals tribunal, whereby participants can go to a independent board or, or court system and argue against the NDIA with their, their lawyers that they hire, um, which is very expensive, obviously, um, to to appeal the decisions of the, the funding of SIL or SDA. So there's been about a 400% increase between July 21 and January 22 uh, of appeals uh, with people within those plans. Yeah, so um, obviously I'd like, um, you know, we'd like to see that that time when they're making appeals for, because that can sometimes, you know, add up to a year. On top of the one and one year, one and a half years of the normal application. Mm. Yeah. So hopefully we will see a kind of reduction in that time time frame mm. um, to funding essentially. Um, yeah. So they Alban, Albanese he has actually said that um, this is their scheme is uh, or their ideas for when they get into government and their promises are as a result of thousands of conversations with people with disability, um, NDIS participants, uh, carers, the families of participants advocates and providers so hopefully it's a um, informed uh, strategy moving forward if they do get into government but yeah so mm. could be could be interesting yeah yep. um in terms of greens um, okay I'll, I'll, I think I'll jump in there Matt yeah so the greens I, mean, I love the greens they're always seem to be the the independent good guys um they're being led by well spearheaded by Senator Jordan Steele John and their comments regarding the reforms that they would like to see with NDIS is a fully full, fully funding the NDIS by increasing the taxes for high income earners and large corporations. Uh, they believe that this economic policy would allow the scheme to be more sustainable in the long term. So, you know, yep. ro- a Robin Hood kind of approach. <laughs> yep. Tax the rich and pay, give the poor. Um, ensuring access for, for people with disabilities throughout the community, both in a physical and digital capacity, which is interesting. Uh, creating more accessible housing and cre- increasing access to healthcare. Creating more decision making policies and planning opportunities for people with disabilities. That's good. Yep. Increasing funding for disability advocacy by thirty million per year. Uh, allowing people with disabilities aged over sixty five to access the scheme. So at the moment, Matt, the if you're over sixty five and you apply, you cannot get into it. But if you get in a fully approved for age sixty five, you have the NDS funding for life. That's how the rules work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I admit, I felt there's been a lot of um, focus on under 65s, middle yeah. under 65s, mm. out of um, mm. out of hospitals and yep. aged care homes. Yep. But yep. that transition that needs to kind of be more aggressive, I suppose. Well, Australia is moving towards a much more older demographic. Absolutely. Yeah. So it makes sense that what the Greens are saying should come to play here with the reforms. And lastly, for the Greens, my last comment here would be increasing employment for people with disabilities particularly in the public sector, which is great to see. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So over to you, Matt, for the Liberal and Coalition. Um, so at the time of the writing, um, 
in terms of uh, where the legislation and uh, policies are at at the moment. Um, the government's dis- disability policies post-election have yet to be released. Um, however, where the government um, and uh, Minister Reynolds have announced a series of reforms and promises over the last few months that they have put forward um, to the voting public. Uh, so these include increasing transparency within the NDIA, uh, particularly in the home and living space. So I think this is important um, just in terms of obviously adding that, that transparency, adding to kind of allowing people to understand more how they fit in as a participant um, both in their funding and the way that they can plan their funding, plan their appeals and plan their journey in the NDIS. So they're also, they've also been enacting, they also said that they'll enact new legislation to improve the scheme bureaucracy and the way that it's governed, um, which has an aim or a view to increase um, participants' experiences. Um, so that, that w- I'm not sure what that means, but that sounds good. So I suppose we'll see if they stay in government, we'll see what that actually means. Mm. Um, so they've um, stipulated that they'll also provide additional funding for the scheme through to 2025. So um, obviously uh, that will be an increase to the NDIS. Um, how, how much that increase is, uh, we're yet to see. Um, there is forecast, and I'll cover that in, in shortly in a minute, yeah. Mm. Um, and uh, so they'll also have... They've also said that they'll have improved improved access to mid cost assistive technology. I think that's kind of in probably the FA FA fully accessible spectrum of technology, which would be in an NDIS house. I'm not sure really what. That well, there's means. lots of technology coming out at the moment, so we'll see more of that coming out. You know, we yeah. we know what the high end technology, high physical needs are, high needs are for participants. We know that in the SDA community. So what the mid cost accessive technology means, that's probably just the, um, just, um, voice activation in technology and the lights, fans, you know, Google, Alexa automation stuff. Yeah, automation yeah. stuff. Yeah. That's yep. what it is. Yeah. Yep. That's what I was saying. Which is pretty cheap. It's not expensive. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Um, and they're, um, as we, we touched on that earlier, um, they're looking at reducing the number of younger people, um, which are those under 65 in aged care. Um, so that's been, I suppose a cornerstone of the aims of NDIS policy up to this point. Mm. Um, so um, that's that. I suppose that's nothing, nothing really too too new. Mm. Um, and lastly, they just they said that they'll have a, a tender process, um, which allow outlines a kind of a new vision for local area coordinators, mm. um, including phasing them out mm. of the planning function to just I suppose make it more more intuitive. I guess. So, Matt, before we let you do the conclusion of this, right, I just want to cover some basic numbers that people should be aware of. Yep. Uh, the scheme was supposed to be $22 billion a year, right, when that was three years ago. Mm-hmm. We're now already at $31 billion a year right now uh, at 500,000 people in the in the community. Yep. And it will blow out. Oh, sorry, the word blow out is wrong. It will expand and cover uh, uh, up to $60 billion a year by the year 2020. Now, just to let you know... Year 2020? Oh, sorry, 2030, sorry. 2030. Um, a few more years. So by then, we'll go from 500,000 participants now in the scheme to 860,000 people in the scheme. 860,000 people in the scheme being managed by a funding of $60 billion. That's more than Medicare, right? Wow. Wow. So, so think about this. Medicare covers 27 million people in Australia, right? 50 billion. Yep. And here we are looking at right now 30 billion for only 500,000 people. Mm. So one third of the cost of the NDIS is being, is the management of the, of the scheme. Yes. So one third yep. is overheads. Yeah. And yeah. it's just crazy. And this is the why so much talk in the, in the, in the press about, um, unsustainable system. Yep. Um, cost cutting. Needs and to all, be long yeah. term. Yep. Needs to be long term. Yeah. So, so every year, well, every few years, we're going to hear more about, these um, cost cutting and or sustainability of the, of the India scheme, and it's important why this right now is important for us to address this matter, these matters in our podcast here because the the, the federal election is only a few weeks away here, Matt. Yeah. So yeah. you're over you to conclude, Matt. Yeah. So um, I mean, although all elections are vitally important um, to the disability sector and have been for some time, um, the stakes are exceptionally high for this one. So. 
Uh, much of the coverage um, that we've seen that has dominated the campaign concerns disability services, as we just mentioned, uh, focus on the scheme sustainability and long-term future, um, as well as kind of reducing those management um, bureaucracy overheads. Yep. Um, so if the uh, elections are supposed to act as a representation of democracy, it, it's obviously up to us to make sure we make an informed choice about who represents us. Um, so if um, obviously if you're involved in the NDIS and it's a sector that's important to you, um, this election is your opportunity to vote according to what you think is important. Mm. And given uh, all the big changes that could occur, we ask you all to do your own research online on your phones at home before you, the election occurs Absolutely. and, and see if the NDS is very important to you, then maybe this could be a topic for you to make your judgment on which way it goes with regards to who wins the election. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks, man. Thank you, man. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please make sure that you are subscribed and following us so that you can keep in the loop with all of our upcoming episodes. We would really appreciate it if you could leave us a five-star rating, a written review, and to share this episode with those that can benefit. Until next time, catch you on the next episode.